whatever she decides next. Has the ability to impact an entire country. In ways no one could ever imagine. Buying Team Namibia is a choice you make for us, not just for you. Join the 2.5 million strong team that grows stronger with every single Team Namibia purchase. Team Namibia, together our future is brighter. Primetime News is a 20 to 25 minute news format coming to you weekdays in the evening from our Heroes Park studios here in the capital of Vinduk. Many thanks for tuning in to the Thursday edition. I'm Michael Madimba. We kickstart tonight's segment in the National Assembly which descended into chaos on Tuesday after the Minister of Labor, Industrial Relations and Employment Creation, Utoni Yoma, made a statement referring to some people as lazy for not building toilets. Speaker Professor Peter Kachavivi lost control of the House for several minutes after several members objected to the tribal remarks made by the Swapo Party lawmaker. Let's take a look at how this unraveled. According to the Bogan project, only 34% of the country's population has access to improved sanitation facilities. 34%. So when you're asking a simple question, is your country a developed country? Even if we are doing good in some strikes, the lack of a basic facility such as toilet is questioning the whole development trajectory of our own country. The problematic of the problem is that we in Namibia, we ourselves, we don't want to construct toilets. I know. Go to the north in Ovambola. Everybody, families try to build sometimes their yes. own toilets, even if a uh, 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 dry water. Eh? Yeah, the pit latrine. Pit latrine. But I know my people here, when I go to the reservoir, you have to wake up in the night having a diarrhea, running into the bush over snakes. And because yes. people are lazy, they don't want to do something. Uh, oh. That is a whole ethnic group. That is, that is, that is, the Utoni Mnoma. Honorable Utoni. Honorable Utoni. Honorable Speaker. Okay. Order, order, order. 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 You are a scientific, you are a scientific tribalist. You are a scientific tribalist. And I tell you why. You know why you are a tribalist? You are a Gandera. Your traditional authority is recognized. Yes. When we are saying bastards must be recognized, you are saying it's Bandu states. You have the toilet, you have toilets in the north, and there are no toilets in, 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 in the Sabata, what you are calling. That's a fantastic tribalism. You must do better. Okay. As a nationalist, you must do better. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation Netumbo Nandin Daitwa says it has become costly to combat malaria, hence the need for regional collaboration to eliminate the disease in Namibia and neighboring countries. During a address on Wednesday, Nandin Daitwa emphasized the continued burden of malaria on healthcare systems and its devastating impact on the population. 
A strong, sustained regional response to malaria is a means to building stronger, more equitable and resilient health systems and one key lever for lifting people out of poverty. The Deputy Prime Minister was speaking at the opening of the Southern African Development Community SADC Elimination 8 high-level meeting in Ventuk to revive the fight against malaria in the region. Elimination 8 is a coalition of eight countries in Southern Africa that collaborates to eliminate malaria, which is endemic in Namibia and other SADC countries except Lesotho. She noted that eliminating malaria from SADC through Elimination 8 will greatly contribute to member state boasting healthier and more resilient populations by fostering relationships of trust between stakeholders to promote health, minimize risk and mitigate the consequences of public health events. This is despite the fact that the Namibian constitution does not directly provide for a right to housing under the Bill of Rights. For Nampa TV News, Lene Adishena. Moving on. Justice Minister Yvonne Dalsap says it is the government's aim to keep borrowers in their homes wherever possible, making reposition of primary residences by banks a last resort. The minister made these remarks on Tuesday in the National Assembly, noting this is in line with international human rights law that recognizes Yvonne's right to an adequate standard of living, including adequate housing. More from this report. In 2018, the High Court delivered a landmark judgment in Hiskia and another versus body corporate of urban space and others where the court remarked, and I quote, courts must administer subject to and in accordance with the constitution, which is the supreme law of the country, and that litigants before both the superior courts and lower courts must enjoy the same constitutional protection. The court further held, that the differences that crops up in the process of debt recovery in the High Court and in the Magistrates' Court create a differentiation between litigants in the Magistrates' Court, and that such differentiation is not reasonable and rationally connected to the purpose for which the Magistrates' Court was created. The Court further held that Section 661A of the Magistrates' Court Act, Rule 36 and 43 of the Magistrates' Court Rules insofar as they permit the sale and execution of immovable property without judicial oversight or famed Article 10.1 of the Constitution, end of quote. Switching attention to West Africa in Liberia, where vote counting was underway on Wednesday, a day after citizens voted on whether to re-elect football legend George Weir, who's running for a second term as president. Liberians overwhelmingly turned out in large numbers on Tuesday to choose their president as well as over six dozen representatives from the legislature's lower chamber and 15 senators. More from this report. Vote County was underway in Liberia on Wednesday, a day after citizens voted on whether to re-elect football legend George Weah, who is running for a second term as president. And really, I want peace for this election. Who's supposed to win, let them win, and let there be peace in our country. Because there is no other country like Mama Liberia. Only Mama Liberia that we have in this world. So I need peace, and we all need peace. That is the reason why we are here today to vote. So whoever that wins, let them win. Uh, right now, as you can see, I've been here since 5 o'clock this morning. I came to exercise my democratic right, that is to vote my leader for the next six years. Liberians enthusiastically turned out in large numbers on Tuesday to choose their president as well as 73 representatives from their legislatures, lower chamber and 15 senators. Reporting for Primetime News, Petrus Namadiko. Up next is a business segment. Stay tuned.
Welcome to the Primetime Biz segment, your premier source for all things business and economics. The segment kickstarts in the Omega region where land surveying of the Kanan Sea informal settlement in Gubabis is projected to incur a total cost of 900,000 Namibian dollars. Now, Secretary of the Kanan Sea Upgrading Committee, Jacob Shinai, revealed this in an interview with Primetime Biz and added the specified amount will be sourced from the over 4,400 households residing in the settlement. Each household is mandated to make a contribution of 210 Namibian dollars. According to Shinai, they need half of the required amount for commencing the land serving. The contribution have thus far reached 380,958.96 Namibian dollars and the community has called on the municipality to extend its support. Khobabas Municipality Public Relations Officer Frederick Witele, however, clarified that this project is community-driven initiative. He said the municipality's involvement will follow the completion of the land survey and said the survey is scheduled to commence to work at the end of this month. Witele also indicated that the failure to make the $210 million contribution will not lead to eviction or relocation, but will instead result as a penalty of $40 million or more. Reporting for Primetime News, Ndamonaka Nganjera. On to the SADC region. The SADC Director for Industrial Development and Trade, Dunaresh Kasi, highlighted that 125,000 children under the age of five die each year from foodborne illnesses which affect 40% of the group. He revealed those numbers in his official open remarks in the event. The director emphasized that the SADC community is dedicated to developing regional cooperation and harmonization of food standards as well as regulations in order to minimize foodborne illnesses and lower the risk of food contamination and protect the integrity of food. One in ten people worldwide get sick and 420,000 people pass away every year from eating contaminated food, according to SADC Director for Industrial Development and Trade, Duranj Kase, in his official opening remarks at the 14th SADC Food Safety Technical Committee meeting, which commenced on Tuesday and concluding today in Lusaka, Zambia. SADC member states agreed to collaborate in creating and putting into practice effective countermeasures against threats of food contamination to save lives and livelihoods while also minimizing variation in these measures that can lead to trade obstacles, he added. The SADC Food Safety Technical Committee will review country reports on member states on how they have progressed in developing domestic food policies and standards. Representatives of food bodies responsible for food safety will share experiences and specific trade concerns as well as discuss unresolved non-tariff barriers. The African Union Commission will represent on the AU Sanitary and Photosanitary SPS Policy Framework and the Food Safety Strategy for Africa in an endeavor to assist the SADC Food Safety Technical Committee to benchmark with continental developments. For Nampa TV News, Lenia Adishina. Let's now turn our attention to the weather oracle for tomorrow's countrywide weather forecast.
become sport planet. Rugby leads the segment. South Africa launched an appeal on Tuesday against World Anti-Doping Agency decision that it threatened to see the country's rugby team barred from flying their flag in this weekend's World Cup quarterfinal against France. Now, Sports Minister Zizi Kodwa said the appeal with the Court of Arbitration for Sport in Switzerland should stave off the effects of the agency's decision sparing the World Cup holders a major embarrassment. The doping agency later confirmed that South Africa would be free to fly their flag until Court of Arbitration for Sport has formally heard the case, effectively diffusing the controversy for the time being. South Africa had been given until Friday to update its anti-doping legislation in compliance with new guidelines, but was almost certain to miss the deadline. South Africa's commitment to anti-doping is unquestionable, and we want to make sure that uh, every provision in the Act that has been set or alleged to be non-compliant, we do comply. And I think we're happy with our engagement with WADA at the moment that we may come to some realization that there may not be even a need to go to cars because if WADA accepts our letter of appeal and dispute, it will then rescind their sanction. On to the world of cricket. Ash rivals India and Pakistan meet in a blockbuster clash at the World Cup on Saturday. India's skipper Rohit Sharma has struggled against Shaheem Shah Afridi's left arm pace on the few outings the two teams have had in recent times. Shaheen rattled Rohit's off stump in their first Asia Cup match in Palikeli last month when the opener's lack of footwork saw him bowed for 11. The duo began at the T20 World Cup in 2021 when Shaheen trapped Rohit LBW for a duck in the first over in Dubai with his pace and swing. Stay tuned for your sports roundup. This is where we dock for tonight. Many thanks for tuning in. Catch us again on the morrow as we wrap up the week's newscast. From myself, Michael Mandimba, alongside my dedicated production crew behind the scenes, it's good night.